I greet you all with universal greetings of love, mercy, and peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقتربت الساعة وانشق القمر وإن يروا آية يعرضوا ويقولوا سحر مستمر وكذبوا وَاتَّبَعُوا أَهْوَاءَهُمْ وَكُلُّ أَمْرٍ مُسْتَقِرٍ صدق الله العظيم جماعة المسلمين سورة القمر the chapter of the moon سورة مكية a surah that was revealed before the hijrah why because when we say مكية أو مدنية هو باعتبار الزمان وليس باعتبار المكان. It is a reference to time and not necessarily a reference to place. For indeed, when our beloved Prophet Muhammad was in Mecca before the Hijrah, Ahlu Mecca, the disbelieving Quraysh, they asked him for a sign. And so Allah gave them a sign. But they turned away from that sign. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed these verses. The hour is nigh. Judgment is near. And this is when? Last year? Ten years ago? Over 1400 years ago, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, The hour is nigh. Judgment is at hand. In actual fact, the first sign, Min Alamat is Sa'at Sugra, of the minor signs, is the prophethood of our beloved Prophet Muhammad. He said, Bu'istu ana was sa'atu kahatain. I was sent and the hour like these two fingers. The difference between me in terms of time and the hour is like these two fingers. And that is the first of the minor signs that the hour is near. A judgment, judgment day is at hand. And the second sign is in Shikaq al Qamar. As it is narrated that when they asked the Prophet وسلم, بينهما that's how it comes in the hadith. That they asked the Prophet ﷺ for a sign. And he showed them the moon in two pieces. He split the moon. So much so that they saw Hira, Jabal Hira. We call it Jabal Nur. But the name of the mountain is Jabal Hira. They saw the tip of the mountain between the two pieces of the moon. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So what did we say? What was the first of the small signs? Was the Ba'tha, the prophethood of our beloved Prophet Muhammad The second of the small signs? In Shikaq al-Qamr, the splitting of the moon. The third of the small signs? The death of our beloved Prophet Muhammad The fourth of the small signs? Fathu Bayt al-Maqdis. The conquering of Jerusalem. And the re-establishment of the true worship of the one almighty creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at Masjid al-Aqsa. May we see the reconquering, the liberation of Bayt al-Maqdis and Masjid al-Aqsa in our lifetime. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. And in the fifth sign was the death of the Sahaba. 
And since then, until now, it is of the majority opinion of the ulama that all the small signs are here. All the minor signs are here. And Jamaat al-Muslimin, especially now what we've just seen a few months ago, with the torrential rain that poured down على الجزيرة العربية on the Arabian Peninsula. And somebody just came back from Umrah the other day and they told me, Mecca is green. Mecca is green. Medina is green. Between Mecca and Medina is green. And this is what our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said, لا تقوم الساعة حتى يكثر الهرج What is haraj? In another riwayah of the hadith, they asked him, ما الهرج يا رسول الله? قال القتل القتل What is haraj? He said, killing, killing How many of the ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have been slain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their shahada, those shuhada that have been slain. Why? Because they said, Qalu Rabban Allah. How many have been slain in the last 10, 20 years? Or well, let's say the last 100 years. How many have been slain in Palestine, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Yemen? And in so many other places, in Myanmar, the Rohingya people. And then he said, And the hour will not come until the land of the Arabs, meaning Al Jazeera Al Arabiya, will go back to being. Murujan, green pastures, wa anhara, and flowing rivers. Some geological or geographical society a few years ago, in one of the countries in the West, I think it was an American study, where they studied maps of the Arabian Peninsula. And they ascertained from those maps that there were once upon a time no less than 10,000 lakes spread right over the Arabian Peninsula. That's why the Prophet said, Hatta ta'uda, until the land of the Arabs returns back to green pastures and flowing rivers. Jamaat al Muslimin, the signs are in front of us. One of the most famous signs which we read in the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, when he came to our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the companions, may Allah be pleased with all of them, ameen, ya rabbal alameen, in the form of a man. And he asked the Prophet وسلم, those famous questions, mal islam, wa mal iman, wa mal ihsan, wa mat as sa'a. What is Islam? What is Iman? What is Ihsan? And when is the hour? Of course, the Prophet couldn't answer that fourth question. He said, Mal mas'ulu anha a'lamu min as-sa'il. The one who is, Mal mas'ulu anha, the one who is being asked, is not more knowledgeable about it than the one who is asking. So then he asked about this ashrat, its signs. And one of the signs that the Prophet gave وسلم, he said, Hufatun Uratun Yatatawaluna fil Bunyan. Barefooted shepherd boys vying with one another, making competition with one another in the building of tall buildings. There, the Amir of Dubai, he built what do they call it? Burj al Khalifa, the tallest building in the world. Now Walid bin Talal, one of the Saudi princes, he is now vying for that position by starting to build a taller building in Jeddah. 
And when you look at their forefathers, they were exactly that. Hufatun uratun. And there's no shame in that. There's no shame in being a barefooted shepherd boy. The Prophet ﷺ indicates to us that there wasn't a prophet except that he herded sheep. He herded livestock. Alayhi salatu was salam. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Aas, he said, إِذَا رَأَيْتَ مَكَّةَ بُعِجَتْ كَذَائِمًا if you see Makkah, Bu'ijat Kadha'ima. There's a difference of opinion as to what that exactly means. But Bu'ijat has to mean with digging or drilling, whether it be by hand or by other means. So literally, if you see the mountains of Makkah with holes through them, وَرَأَيْتَ الْبِنَا يَعْلُوا and you see the buildings of Makkah going higher than the mountains of Makkah. The clock tower is taller than Jabal Nur. He said, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأَمْرَ قَدْ أَذَلَّكَ فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأَمْرَ قَدْ أَذَلَّكَ Then know that the matter is upon you, has overshadowed you. In fact, I found one commentary on this. أي فقد ظلت الساعة فقد ظلت الساعة الساعة What is الساعة? The hour. Judgment day. The hour is overshadowing you, literally. But another word that can be translated from ساعة is clock. So literally, the clock tower has overshadowed you. So it literally... From a literal perspective and from a figurative perspective, it is at hand. The hour is upon us. وَقَالَ أَيْدٌ صَلَوَاتُ رَبِّ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْهِ لَا تَقُومُ السَّاعَةِ حَتَّى تَزُولَ الْجِبَالُ عَنْ عَمَاكِنِهَا The hour will not come until the mountains have been moved from their places. You look at Makkah, where is Jabal Abi Qubais? It's gone. The king's palace is built on it. Or what's left of it? Jabal Qu'ai Qu'an. Where is it? Gone. The Jabal Umar project. How many? Five, six new hotels? It's gone. These are all the signs that our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, spoke about. And of the signs of the hour. أن يرفع العلم ويثبت الجهل ويشرب الخمر وينتشر الزنا. And of the signs of the hour that knowledge will be lifted. And not lifted that you know one day a learned person will be learned and the next day, hey what happened? Have all my files been deleted? What happened like that? لا ينتزع العلم انتزاعا. He won't take it away from the learned people. Allah will take knowledge away by removing the ulama, by removing the learned people. Until there are none left. Until not one learned person is left. And then people will take ru'us and juhala. They will follow ignorant people, foolish people. فَأَفْتَوْ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ And they will give fatwa without any knowledge. فَضَلُّوا وَأَضَلُّوا And they will go astray. The people giving the fatwa based on ignorance. And the people that they will give the fatwa to will go astray. وَيَثْبُتَ الْجَهْلُ Ignorance will be established. In other words, ignorance will proliferate and become established in the society, in the community. And this is one of the muwasafat, one of the descriptions of the end times. Ayyam al-fitan. Ayyam al-fitan. The trials and tribulations that will come in the end times. What did the Prophet say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? 
Make haste in doing good deeds. Why? Because there are trials and tribulations coming like a dark night. We don't really know what's a dark night. Okay, I know we get load shedding nowadays, so we have, a, we have an idea what's a dark night. But if you really want to know what's a dark night, go into a village in the middle of nowhere where they don't have electricity at night. I experienced this in a place called Hergisa in Somaliland. And at the beginning and the end of the month, when there's no moon, while well, light was so dark when I walked to the masjid for Fajr, I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. As Allah SWT says about the abyss, which is a thousand meters and below in the ocean, if a man had to take out his hand in front of him, he would hardly be able to see it. Only then did I understand what the Prophet ﷺ was speaking about when he said a dark night. People will be so ignorant of their deen. People will be so ignorant of Allah and his messenger salawatu rabbi salamu that they won't be able to distinguish or differentiate between truth and falsehood, lawful, prohibited, right or wrong. فَيُرْفَعَ الْعِلْمُ وَيَثْبُتَ الْجَهْلُ وَيُشْرَبَ الْخَمْرُ And khamar is not just wine. The word khamar comes from the word khimar with a kha, not a ha. Khimar with a ha is a donkey. Khimar with a kha is a veil. Like the lady puts a complete veil over her face, they call that khimar. Now the reason why Anything that intoxicate is called khamr because it literally veils the frontal lobe, which is that part of the intellect that we use for discretion, for differentiation, for distinguishing between good and bad. That's what Allah Taala says: Nasiyatin kadibatin khatia, a lying, sinful forelock. And that's exactly what happens to a person when they become intoxicated. The carnal mind takes over. They can no longer differentiate or distinguish between good and bad and right and wrong. And that's why people that are intoxicated sometimes, they even act worse than animals. And adultery and a fornication will become widespread. Why do you think we are having these pandemics and these famines even if it is being caused in one part of the world and coming down in another part Allah SWT warns us وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُسِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خَاصَ Beware of a trial that will not only afflict those amongst you who are doing wrong it will afflict everybody because the Prophet ﷺ warned us, he said, لَمْ تَظْهَرِ الْفَاحِشَةُ فِي قَوْمٍ قَتْ إِلَّا وَفَشَ فِيهِمُ الطَّاعُونَ وَالْأَوْجَاءَ الَّتِي لَمْ تَكُنْ مَضَتْ فِي أَصْلَى فِيهِمْ He said, never ever does fahisha, which is any form of obscenity, vulgarity, promiscuity, sexual deviancy, homosexuality, adultery and fornication and the like thereof, Never does that become widespread within a people. Except that pandemics and famines will spread amongst them the like of that which hasn't been seen in their predecessors. So in Jamaat al-Muslimin, these are all signs. There's no more time for play. And these fitan that we are seeing, we had the fitna of Corona. Now we're in the fitna of this LGBTQ transgender. We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all evil. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. What is next? What's coming after that? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he describes the fitan that they will come in waves like tsunamis. فَتَجِيُوا الْفِتْنَةِ فَتُرَقِّقُوا بَعْضُهَا بَعْضًا The fitna will come. The next fitna, the next trial, will make the previous one seem insignificant. I ask you, Billahi alaykum, are you ready for the next fitna? Are you ready for the next fitna? None of us can say yes. Allahumma thabbitna, ya Rabb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us steadfast. 
So, if there are waves coming, Jamaatul Muslimin, if there's going to be a flood, a cataclysmic flood of trials and tribulations that is heading for this ummah, the ummah of Muhammad, then we better get on board the ark of salvation. That ark that goes with Bismillah and stops with Bismillah. Now, we all know the ark of salvation for Nabi Nuh that happened in his time. And that which Allah ordered him to build. Tajari bi'ayunina. Traveling under our protection. The tit- it wasn't made of s- steel like the Titanic. You know the Titanic, the man who commissioned its building said not even God can sink the ship. And it sank on its maiden voyage. Yet the ark of Nabi Nuh was made of what? Alwahin wa dusur, planks and nails, and not metal nails, wooden nails. Tajri bi ayunina, but it was unsinkable. Why? Because it travelled under the protection of Allah. I tell you today, billahi alaykum, the only ship of salvation that is going to save us from this fitna is the Holy Quran and the Sunnah of Khair al Anam, salawat rabbi salamu alayh. Otherwise, we're going to drown. We're not going to make it. Who of you here today, and I start with myself, can even guarantee that our children or our children's children or their children are going to be Muslim? There's no guarantees. So we better prepare. And that's why we need to hold onto this rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One minute, Jamaat al-Muslimin, and then I'll have to bring this talk to an end. The Prophet ﷺ, he was sitting with Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib and some of the companions. And he said to them, Satakunu fitna, there's going to be a trial. Sayyidina Ali asked, he said, Mal makhraju minha ya Rasulullah, what will be the escape? What's the thing, the only thing that's going to save us from these trials and tribulations? Qala kitabullah, the book of Allah. In it is the information of those who came before you. And the news you are to come after you. And it's the book that you used to rule amongst you. It's clear cut. There's no jest in it. Whatever tyrant turns his back on it, Allah will destroy them. And whoever seeks guidance in anything but it, Allah will send them astray. It is the indestructible rope of Allah. It's the wisest remembrance of Allah. It is the straight path of Allah. No whims or fancies can corrupt it. No incorrect pronunciation can change it. You'll never get bored of it. The learned people never get their fill of it. And you will never be ceased to be amazed by it. It's that book that even when the jinn heard it, they could not but say, Inna sami'na Qur'anan ajaba. We've heard an amazing reading. Fa'amanna bi. Yahdi ila rushd. It guides that which is upright, and so we have believed in it. Man qala bihi sadaq. Whoever quotes the Qur'an has spoken the truth. Wa man amila bihi ujir. And whoever lives with the Qur'an will indeed be rewarded. Wa man hakama bihi adal. And whoever rules by the Qur'an is indeed ruled with justice. Wa man da'a ilayhi hudi ala sirati mustaqim. And whoever calls to the Qur'an will indeed be God guided to a straight path of Allah. Are you ready to get aboard? Let's get aboard. Let's hold on to that Qur'an and never let go. And that is the way that we are going to get through all of these trials and tribulations. And that we are going to stay in Iman and in Islam and in Ihsan on the straight path of Allah. إِلَىٰ جَنَّاتِ النَّعِيمِ وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَ عَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ